How to Start a Conversation in English from EspressoEnglish.net Do you have difficulty speaking English? Sometimes the hardest part is simply starting a conversation. Today, you'll learn expressions for starting a conversation in English in any situation, formal or informal, at work, school, or other contexts. With friends, you can use informal English expressions like these. What's up? What's new? How's it going? To reply to what's up or what's new, people often say something that has happened in their life currently or recently. You can also say not much if there's nothing to report. If someone says how's it going, you can answer great, good, or not so good, and then say why. With colleagues in the office, you use slightly more formal English, such as these. Hi, John. How are you doing? How's your day going? We're sure having a busy day today. Or, we're sure having a slow day today. Have you heard the news about... Have you got any plans for the weekend? Or, how was your weekend? You can talk about projects you're working on or about hobbies you have outside work. Current national and international news is also a good topic of conversation. How about starting a conversation with a friend who you haven't seen in a long time? Here are some common expressions to start a conversation with someone you see after a long separation. Hi, Paula. How have you been? Long time no see. So, what have you been up to lately? How's your family? Are you still working at ABC Company? In this case, you can ask about news in your friend's work, study, family, and hobbies. The friend will probably ask you about recent developments in your own life, too. How about starting a conversation at a social event, like a party or a wedding? If you see someone you don't know, you can say, I don't think we've met. I'm Shana. Are you from New York? So, how do you know Mary? Have you tried the chocolate cake? It's delicious. If you're at a party or wedding, you can start a conversation by asking how the person knows the host of the party or the people getting married. You can also comment about the food and drinks or about the music. Now let's look at phrases for starting a conversation at a conference or a work event. You can use that same line to greet a stranger who you'd like to get to know. I don't think we've met. I'm Shana. So, where are you from? What did you think of the speaker? That was an excellent workshop. I learned a lot. How about you? You can ask about the person's job, what company they are from, and their opinions about the conference events. How about talking to someone who you were just introduced to? Of course, you can say, nice to meet you. You can also ask, how do you two know each other, if a friend is introducing a new person? Other good conversation starters include, so, what do you do for a living? That means, what is your job? If the person is introduced as a student, you can ask, What are you studying? Another good follow-up question is, How long have you been a journalist? How long have you been doing yoga? How long have you been interested in music? And how did you get into it? When you meet someone for the first time, you can ask casually about the new person's profession, interests, hobbies, etc. Their answers will then give you opportunities to ask more or share about yourself. It's common to start conversations with people who you meet outside in public places. Here are some phrases for that. It's a beautiful day, isn't it? It looks like it's going to rain or snow. Can you believe all this rain we've been having or snow? Sure is a hot one today. Or, sure is a cold one today. Just look at those flowers. They're amazing, aren't they? Your dog is so cute. What's his name? 
If you're in a park, on the street, etc., the most common way to start a conversation is by talking about the weather or the surroundings. Finally, when talking with a stranger, that's a person you don't know, in other contexts, the secret is to make a comment about the current social context. Here are a few examples of how to do this. At an art gallery. That's an interesting painting. What do you think of it? At a bar. This is a great song. I love Latin music. How about you? At a sports game. Wow, that was a great play. So, who's your favorite player? At a cafe. Boy, do I need a coffee. At a concert or event. What a great turnout. Have you ever been here before? At a playground. My kids are sure full of energy today. You don't need to ask a direct question. You can simply make a comment to the other person, and this is like an invitation for the other person to comment, too. This can then begin a conversation, and we'll learn more about how to continue the conversation in our next lesson. If you want to learn the phrases you need for situations in day-to-day -day life, take my Everyday English Speaking course. You can click on the link in the video for more information. How to Continue a Conversation in English from EspressoEnglish.net Here's an example of how not to have an English conversation. Did you have a good weekend? Yes, I did. And you? Yeah. Unfortunately, the conversation stops here because there's no natural way to continue it. You have to think of a new question. This is okay if you only want to have a quick conversation, for example, if you are quickly passing a coworker in the hallway. But how can you have a longer conversation in English? Today, I'm going to teach you three keys to continuing a conversation. The first one is to ask questions that start with question words, like who, what, when, where, why, and how. Try to avoid yes or no questions, because yes or no questions can be answered with a very short answer, yes or no. But questions that start with question words will bring out more information from the other person. For example, if you ask the other person, how did you spend your weekend? Then they will start talking about the activities they did. The second key to continuing a conversation is this. In each of your answers, give one or two details that will help continue the conversation. You don't need to talk for a long time, so it takes the pressure off. The third key is to talk about these topics. Family, interests and hobbies, sports, TV, movies, music, popular culture, current events, travel and interesting places, and your experiences or the other person's experiences. Unless the other person is a very good friend of yours, avoid topics like politics, religion, sex life, health problems, and personal finances. These are considered topics to be discussed only among very close friends or family members. Here are two example conversations. Notice how each person adds one or two details, and then there is a follow-up question about the details. Conversation 1. Hey, how was your weekend? Pretty good. I went to a baseball game with my brother. Really? Who was playing? The Yankees and the Red Sox. We're huge Yankees fans. Yeah? How was the game? Very exciting. It was tied until the last inning, when we won 2-1. to one. Ha, <laughs> that's great. I can't say I'm a baseball fan myself. I prefer basketball. Basketball, huh? Playing or watching? Both. I've played basketball since I was a kid. No kidding. You must be really good. Well, I just play for fun. It's a great workout. I bet. I could use more exercise myself, but I don't think I'm cut out for basketball. I was thinking of joining a martial arts class. That sounds interesting. Which one? 
So you can see how the conversation goes from the weekend to baseball to basketball and then exercise and martial arts. Each person just gives one or two details and then the follow-up question kind of comes naturally. Here's another one, conversation number two. This conversation takes place in a park. What a beautiful day. It feels like summer. Sure does. I can't wait for the summer. We're taking a big family vacation in June. Oh, where are you going? We're going to Colorado for a month of hiking and camping. Have you ever been there? Yes, I've actually been to Denver twice on business trips, but they didn't involve any hiking. How about you? Any special plans for the summer? No, not really. I'm saving up my vacation time for December when I'm going to Costa Rica. Wow, why Costa Rica? Well, my best friend from college lives there now. She owns a hotel, and she invited me to spend a couple of weeks there to escape the cold winter weather. How wonderful! Do you speak any Spanish? Barely any. Only what I remember from classes in high school. Again, it's easy to keep the conversation going when you ask about the other person's plans and experiences. I think it's great to learn spoken English from conversations, and in my Everyday English Speaking course, you have that opportunity. You'll read and listen to a dialogue, and then I'll explain the phrases and expressions. Click on the link in the video to take a free sample. How to End a Conversation in English from EspressoEnglish.net Sometimes you're in the middle of a conversation, but you want or need to get out of it. How can you end the conversation without being rude or awkward? Well, here are two keys for ending a conversation. The first one is to smile. Be friendly when ending the conversation, so the other person knows you enjoyed the conversation, and doesn't think you're ending the conversation because you're annoyed or because you don't like the person. The second key is to make a positive comment, then say you need to go, or give a reason for ending the conversation. Let's look at some examples. Hey, it was nice talking to you, but I've got to run. Okay, no problem. Have a good one. You too. Bye. You can see that there's a positive comment, it was nice talking to you, and then the phrase, I've got to run, that means I need to go. So I give a positive comment and then say that I need to leave. Here's another example of an informal way to end a conversation. Well, I'd love to keep chatting, but I have to head out. My yoga class starts in an hour. Oh, enjoy your class. Thanks. See you later. Again, we've got a positive comment, I'd love to keep chatting, but then a reason for leaving, I need to go to yoga class. Here's one more. Thanks for the book recommendations, I'll definitely have to check them out. Anyway, I actually need to go pick up my kids from school. All right, take care. Notice how all three conversations use a transitional word like hey, well, or anyway, to introduce the end of the conversation. How about some more formal examples, like at work? You can end a conversation at work by giving a summary of the conversation or the next actions to take. This gives the other person a signal that you would like to end the conversation and not continue talking. For example, Okay, so I'll call the distributors while you prepare the contract and we'll touch base next week. Sounds like a plan. Great. Have a good afternoon. Thanks. You too. Bye. Here's another way to do it. You could wait for a slight pause in the conversation, then use this line. Anyway, I should get back to work. Or, anyway, I've got a few more things to take care of. This is an indirect way of saying that you have other things to do, and so you need to stop talking. And the other person will probably say, yeah, me too. See you later. Finally, here's a way to say that you respect the other person's time. Well, I know you're busy, so I don't want to keep you. That's okay. Nice talking to you. This is often used on phone calls when you want to bring the conversation to a close and you are expressing respect for the other person's time and saying that you won't keep talking to them forever. Let's finish this lesson with various ways to say goodbye. We have some ways that we use in both formal and informal English. 
such as bye or bye-bye, see you soon and see you later, take care, have a good one, have a nice day, and so long. And among friends and in casual conversations, we have some informal ways to say goodbye, like take it easy, catch you later, or simply later, I'm off, or I'm out. And finally, peace or peace out. Again, these are more informal ways to say goodbye. If you enjoyed this lesson, check out my Everyday English Speaking course. It's designed to help you become a more confident English speaker by giving you phrases to use in daily life. Click on the link in the video to find out more about the Everyday English Speaking course and to register. Hey everybody, I'm Shayna from EspressoEnglish.net and I'm here with Gabby from GoNaturalEnglish.com and we're recording the second video of our conversational English series. So today we're going to talk a little bit about our experience teaching English in the classroom. I think you'll find um, a lot of interesting stuff that maybe some stories we have to share. Yeah. So Gabby, tell me how long you've been teaching English? Well, I've been teaching English, um, gosh, since about 2002. That was, wow. yeah, that was my first, you know, when I was like five years old. Um, no, <laughs> that, no, joking. That was my first time teaching um, conversational English, uh, tutoring, and I just, I continued with it because I loved it from, from that day. And I've been teaching online now since about 2011. Okay. Yeah. And before that, were you teaching in a classroom or? Yeah. So from about 2005 to 2011, I was teaching in a classroom and I was teaching adults. Actually, I taught in Japan for a while and cool. I was teaching in 2011, I was teaching in a company. So it was like in company training for adult business professionals and um, small classes. Uh, and it was, it was different. I've also taught, well, I've taught in a lot of different settings, but in a university mm -hmm. and different, different like private language schools, so a lot of different places. Got it. Yeah. Wow. That's a lot of experience. Oh, Way thanks. more than me. <laughs> no. Well, tell me about you. How long have you been teaching online and English? And Well, I was, I guess my teaching started when I was in college. I was okay. a writing tutor. And okay. so I would help people with their papers, basically. Great. And I'd get a lot of international students and they would need some help with the English too. Mm. Um, but I really liked helping people. I think that was just, I loved seeing people have like that light bulb moment where they're like, oh, I understand it now and yeah. now I can do it better. So rewarding. I feel like I can communicate better. Um, yeah. And so I started actually teaching English in the classroom in Brazil in 2010. Nice. Um, I moved down there to be with my husband and thought, what can I do? I can yeah. teach English. So, yeah, yeah, that's perfect. And then Espresso English started around what Two, year? 2012. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that, you know, we started around the same time and, you know, now you're here and yeah, it's, it's very cool. Um, so what was your teaching like and what was your classroom like in Brazil? I was teaching adults okay. and um, also small classes, small group classes, usually yeah. maybe four to eight students. Um, and they would usually put me with the intermediate to advanced learners. Okay. Uh, normally they would use a native speaker native yeah. English speaker for the higher levels. Um, but I really loved working with the students because they were they were fun. Um, they participated a lot in the class, which I love, right? Yeah. I think we get a lot of energy from that give and take of, you know, That's teacher and student. That's my favorite too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So did you ever have um, like a favorite student? <laughs> Can I ask that? I know, I know we're supposed to love all students equally, but did you ever have a, a favorite? I did have um, one student who I greatly admired oh. because he came to me, he was high beginner okay. and really had a lot of problems with English. Okay. And in fact, in his native language of Portuguese, he had a speech problem. Oh, wow. So pronouncing English words was like even worse. Yeah. But he worked really hard. Oh. Like he overcame that lack of natural talent just yeah. by he did his homework every day. He would study extra. Wow. He would go far beyond, you know, the minimum. And yeah. I think the funniest thing that ever happened with him was um, he 
He was farsighted. That means、mm. that he could see the chalkboard、okay. or the whiteboard, but he couldn't see、um, like a text. Oh wow! If he didn't have his glasses. Right. Okay. Well, sometimes he would forget his glasses, and、mm. then of course I couldn't use any of my worksheets.、Oh, no. So one day I was not very, or I had prepared a really great class, and he、mm. came in and said, "Teacher, I forgot my glasses." And I thought, oh, oh great. Well, it's just going to have to be conversation.、Yeah. Well, sometimes conversation is difficult when you're pre-intermediate.、Mm. So we talked, and I asked him about his weekend and about his work, and you know everything、uh-huh. I could think of. And we we're you know half an hour into the conversation, I'm thinking I don't have anything else to talk about. What am I going to do? And I look at him, and I see he has a pocket, and、oh. in his pocket, I said. Are those your glasses? Oh, <laughs> he said. Oh, my look, it's my glasses. And so he put them on, and we finished the class with some worksheets. And was it was、so、so it was funny, but he made a ton of progress. He was a solid intermediate、wow. by the time we finished. That's、so. amazing. Did you have、uh, any students who particularly inspired you? Yeah, you know, I learned a lot from some of my students. Like I was thinking of one in particular in Japan, one of the one of the adults in the company where I was teaching. And through talking with him, I found out that in his personal life, his、uh, hobby was to play drums. And、mm. this is important because in English class, you know, one thing that、um, he was having a lot of trouble with was stress and intonation、oh. and like the musicality of English. And so he actually thought of this, and he taught me like. That playing drums actually helped him to understand the musicality of English and like where to put the stress. Because one day I think we were talking about how in English it's so important to put stress on a certain syllable or a certain、mm-hmm. word in the sentence, and he was like, "Oh, it's like playing the drums. It's da 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 or da 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 da." And I was like, "Yes, exactly, yes." And that was just kind of an interesting moment, just to. See him apply something he was really passionate about to learning English, and that helped a lot. And he was just such a sweet, sweet student. He was really shy, but like he would, he would speak up.、Um, in when he had something to say, it was amazing. When he, when、mm-hmm. he spoke up, it was just like, wow, you just taught me something new. So yeah, yeah, that was. That's a student I'll remember, maybe forever. That's a nice breakthrough. Yeah, I think one of the cool things about teaching in a classroom is you see a lot of different learning styles. Yeah.、Um, you know, some students learn better with a lot of interaction. Some students learn better if they have the time to kind of quietly study by themselves. Yeah.、Um, but you have to teach everyone in a classroom, right? Yeah. Well, now, how about has there ever been a moment、uh, where things didn't go as planned, or maybe you made a mistake, or like something? I don't know.、Mm. Let's go there. Let's. <laughs> <laughs> We can't just talk about the good stuff. That's true. <laughs> there have been classes I have been extremely unprepared for, and、mm-hmm. I've had to just improvise things off the top of my head.、Yeah. And I don't like that because I like to feel like I'm prepared. Yeah. And I think there's a parallel to English learners actually. Like a lot、mm-hmm. of English learners, they they want to feel like they know everything and they're ready to say the right things in a conversation. Oh yeah. But sometimes you have to do it on the fly and、yeah. have that ability to like improvise.、Oh, um, yeah. And so、okay. I always felt really insecure. About those classes when I、mm. hadn't prepared anything, or m- the printer didn't work to print、oh. the worksheets, or whatever it was. But if I could just keep a positive attitude, they actually ended up being really good classes. I bet that's what I was gonna ask. Is like they probably turned out really well. Yeah, yeah,、hmm. that's interesting. Yeah, I think I I hate it when、uh, when a student would ask me a question in class that I didn't really know the answer、mm-hmm. to. I didn't really <laughs> feel confident about it, and. I think that's difficult because you know I, I want to be able to answer anything, but I'm a human. Like、yeah. I don't know everything. I'll admit it. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes you just have to say, "I'll get back to you. I need to check." But I know sometimes the students didn't like that, and I felt bad about it. But you know, then you check it and you get back to them, and、mm-hmm. it's okay. Or I would say, "Hey, why don't you look that up?" And you know, you can report back to us. But yeah, those are the moments that I just felt like. Oh, sorry. They're kind of rough. <laughs> They're kind of rough. So, what's your favorite part about teaching online? Oh man, I love that. You know, well, in a classroom, I would have maximum fifteen students. In、mm-hmm. well, in the U.S. and in Japan, the class sizes are quite small,、um, at least where I taught. But I love that online, I can reach so many people. You know,、mm-hmm. my videos and you know, website lessons, and whatnot, reach. 
a lot of people. Um, so that's that's really exciting. And hearing from those people, you know, when when you guys send me an email and you're like, "Hi, I'm so and so from so and so country," and I'm like, "Wow, I yes. want to go there. Yeah. That sounds interesting." And um, just having that connection with people pretty much all over the world is super exciting. And I think that's what's different from teaching in a classroom. You know, yeah, I went to teach in Japan and I, I had that experience, but until now I never you know, got to meet people from all over the world. So yes. that's super exciting. I would say exactly the same thing. Like in addition to just purely being able to talk to and teach a lot of students that you know, we wouldn't be able to fit in a classroom. Yeah. Um, there's just, uh, like you said, I get emails from all over the world and mm. in some of my courses there's homework. And mm. so when students send in their homework, um, I get a little insight into their culture or into yeah. their way of thinking. And that's just fascinating for me because I love travel. I know you love travel. Yeah. And one of the best parts of traveling is getting exposed to different viewpoints and yeah. learning new things. So yeah, yeah. we love, love teaching online. We love teaching you guys. <laughs> Well, that's wonderful. I'm glad we could talk a little bit about our classroom experience mm -hmm. and our online experience. And I know we probably both have a lot of stories to share, but we'll continue talking. And I think we're doing another um, episode next week, uh, Friday. That's right. Not about teaching, but um, we're, I think we're going to talk about the holidays that are coming yeah, up. Yeah, there's a holiday coming up in the United States. Yeah. And so we're going to chat about some of our favorite holidays and traditions. Yeah, that'll be fun. Awesome. All right, we'll see you guys then. Bye-bye. Bye. Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Gabby from Go Natural English, and this is Shayna from EspressoEnglish.net. You know, the holidays are coming up, in particular Thanksgiving is coming up next week, and we wanted to talk a little bit about it. So, yeah, so hey Shayna, how's it going? Hey Gabby, I'm looking forward to the holidays. Yeah, me too. Um, so, what do you usually do for Thanksgiving? I'm usually together with my family. Okay. Um, my family's really close, and so that's my parents, my brother, my grandparents, and various aunts and uncles uh, and cousins. Nice. And we all we all just get along really well. Um, oh, so, so like there's time. Yeah, yeah, there's no conflicts. Like we love to laugh together. Like just hang out. Um, eat a lot. Yeah. <laughs> what kinds of foods do you guys usually make? Well, um, my grandmother's an excellent cook, so is oh. my mom. And so there's always turkey, there's soup, there's salad, there's ham, um, various wow. like snack type things. Okay. So um, I just eat it. I don't have to cook yeah. it. So <laughs> that's good. Um, I'm trying to remember what my mom used to make when we had like a big family celebration. It's been a while since we've had like a big family celebration, but when I was younger, we would all get together. Definitely turkey. Mm -hmm. That's like the thing you have to have. Unless you're vegetarian, then you could do like a tofu turkey. Uh, that's Maybe. a thing. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Um, cranberry sauce. Yes. Uh, mashed potatoes, sweet potatoes, so a lot of potato starches, mm -hmm. green beans. Corn, maybe. Um, I'm trying to think what else is traditional Thanksgiving food. Definitely for desserts, pumpkin pie. Yes. Mm, love pumpkin pie. Um, yeah, just a lot of food. When I think of Thanksgiving, I think of my stomach being very full and like to the point of feeling like I'm going to burst. <laughs> what do they call it? They call it like a food coma. Like you yeah. feel really sleepy, like, like you yeah. know, after you eat a really big meal. Oh, and you know, I'm not like such a big sports person, but isn't there always like the uh, football or something around uh, Thanksgiving? Yeah, American football. American football. Um, I think so. That's when like the season kicks off or something. Yeah. yeah. I just remember, you know, people eating Thanksgiving and then maybe, maybe it wasn't even the same day, but like uh, watching football around that time as well. So that's a... A big thing, American football. Of yes, course. it's an American tradition. Yeah. But besides Thanksgiving, what other holidays do you like? You know, I I'll take any holiday. I love holidays, <laughs> but I really love New Year's because I've started making it kind of um, a period not only for celebration but also to slow down at the end of the year. Yes. And reflect or look back on the year that has passed so quickly. Mm -hmm and make plans for the new year. So I really like that. I like that for about a week, in the US at least, 
it just feels like everyone slows down and relaxes yes. and you can breathe and you can just spend time with family and friends or maybe travel a lot of people will travel for new year's actually last year i was in mexico and the awesome. year before brazil and before that i was probably in japan i want to say so i've traveled a lot for new year's but i just like the feeling that i get where i can stop kind of reflect and plan for the, a new beginning so yes to, so to speak what about you what, what um, do you look forward to for Halloween? i i really like that period as well mm. for exactly the reasons you said nice. um just a chance to slow down because i think we're always rushing around yeah. uh in the u.s and especially as entrepreneurs uh, yeah. you know we have a lot of stuff to do and always. i love reflecting as well i yeah. write like a summary of my year like how it went oh. um and New Year's itself, we always spend with my best friend's family nice. in their beach house, but oh. don't get too excited <laughs> because the beach house is in New Jersey, so oh. there is snow on the beach. It's, so so no swimming, no... No, no. Okay. I, you know, I've seen a guy in a wetsuit braving the waves for like surfing, oh, uh, but it's, it's cold. Yeah, it's really it. cold. And so, wow. but we have fun just um, enjoying each other's company, yeah. um, you know, enjoying hopefully the end of a year that we lived well and we right. accomplished some things and also oh. looking forward to that new beginning. So. Yeah, I love that. I'm really looking forward to it now. It's coming soon. Are you spending New Year's in Brazil this year? I think so. I think I'm going to go to Brazil uh, because, well, for a few reasons. It's a lot warmer. Yeah. Yes, than New I'm York. jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, New York City is an amazing place to be for New Year's. You probably know, you know, the ball drops in Times Square, mm -hmm. and, and there's that. Um, but I really love the beach, and I love warm weather, and uh, I think it will be fun. And it'll be nice to get away for a little bit and be in a different environment where I can just, just pause and reflect and maybe do some journaling, mm -hmm. reflecting on my year. When I'm in New York, I feel like there's always things I want to go out and do and, yes. and yeah, so it'll be, it'll be nice. That's, that's the plan anyway. We'll see. What about you? Where are you thinking of spending New Year's? You know, I'm honestly not even sure this year. Yeah. Um, plans are all up in the air, but uh, I'm maybe sure Maybe with we'll... your friends uh, in the beach house. Yeah, yeah, actually they're, they're traveling right now. So they're oh. out of, out of the country. So no luck there, but oh. uh, yeah, we'll, we'll figure out something. Yeah, there's still do. time. We always do. Nice. But I feel like in the U.S. we don't have that many holidays, though, maybe as some other countries. Yeah, I know. Well, I think that there's a few, very few big ones where they're You're like right. federal, you know, nationwide holidays where you know the bank's going to close and, you know, every everybody's state, not everybody, but some people have the day off, we'll yeah. say. Um, and what would that be like? New Year, well, Christmas, New Year's. Thanksgiving, probably Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving's a holiday. Yeah. Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, Fourth of July. Fourth of July. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, we skip like all those. You know, January, February, March, April, May. There might be like one. Isn't like President's Day or Martin Luther King Day? Some people celebrate. There's a lot of gray area. I think it depends on yeah. your job and even the city you live in. Uh, what's going to be a big holiday or not? Yeah. Actually, when I was living in Brazil, it was sometimes frustrating because there mm. were, I was living in Bahia, yeah. the state of Bahia in Brazil, and there were actually too many holidays. So, oh. for example, oh. carnival would be like at least a week, maybe 10 days, and then there would be all sorts of days for like the Catholic saints, right. religious holidays, and so things would close, and I would actually be frustrated. I mean, I love celebration. I love yeah. like all the different kinds of celebration that you have, yeah. but sometimes it would be frustrating because I felt like like you said, the bank is how closed. Do you get yeah, how do you get things done? I don't know. It's interesting because here we don't really have saints days. We, I mean, I guess Christmas is a time of day or about a week, depending on mm -hmm. where you work, but you get that time off, but we don't really have the saints days like you have in Brazil. So that's interesting. But yeah, there's there's a lot of good holidays coming up. That's why we call this period of time the, the holidays. holidays. Yes. Because we can look forward to definitely having some holidays coming up. So so yeah. Um, I would yeah. love to hear from actually people who are watching what holidays you have in your country. Because there That's are some question. that we don't even know about and right. we'd love to learn. So if you have a holiday in your country that is unique or you just yeah. really enjoy, then leave a comment, right? Yeah. And if I can ask another question, I'm curious if you celebrate any American holidays, do you mm. celebrate Thanksgiving? Do you celebrate Halloween in your country? 
I would be interested to know both of these things. So yeah, not the comment. not the Fourth of July, right? Because that's yeah, American that, Independence. Yeah. Like if you celebrate that, that's kind of interesting, but you probably don't. But <laughs> right. <it's okay. laughs> well, great. So this is our third conversation of four. Mm -hmm. So next week you can join us again on Friday for another conversation. We're going to be talking about a really special project that you know we've worked on together three times now. Um, going into what almost two years? No, one about one year. This will be the this one year. This will be one anniversary? year anniversary. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So we're going to be talking about how the English Power Pack came about, why we do it, and just having a conversation about what we're excited about in that. So I'm excited. Yeah. Me too. Awesome. Awesome. So if you want to learn more about Shana, she's at EspressoEnglish.net, and I'm Gabby at GoNaturallyEnglish.com. We'll see you next week. See Bye. you.